This video is going to show you how to run univariate ANOVAs or one way between subjects ANOVAs in JASP. It's also going to cover how to do it when your data meets all the assumptions of a univariate ANOVA and also we'll cover what to do if you violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So the data the example is going to look at today is relatively straightforward. We've got an experimental condition in which we had people either adopt a dog, adopt a cat, or adopt nothing, our control condition. And then we just measured how content they were on a 0 to 7 scale. And what we're interested in is the extent to which adopting a dog, for example, my Bill the Dover Hound here, makes you more content than if you adopted a cat, for example this, compared to a control condition of no adoption whatsoever. So to run the analysis on this, we just go to ANOVA and then ANOVA. So it's not labeled as univariate or between subjects or anything like that, but you can see repeated measures ANOVA is labeled differently there. So we just go to ANOVA, and this gives us our series of options. And as ever, we've got our nice neat JASP interface here just going to close that right over and bring that across so we've got as much space as possible to look at this you may be familiar with this from SPSS we've got our list of variables in our data set straightforward just condition and contented our dependent variable our fixed factors and our WLS weights which we are not going to look at today so all we need to do is tell JASP that condition is our fixed factor, it's our independent variable, you can see it populates tables we go along, and our dependent variable is consented, and it automatically populates a table for, for us. Before we start looking at these things and interpreting these things in any way, we can check our homogeneity tests, so this gives us our Levine's test, so do we have equality of variances, so are the variances in each of our experimental conditions relatively equal? And we want this to be non-significant. So as you can see, we've got a non-significant p-value here. So essentially, this means we can trust our ANOVA table here. Before we go any further, what we'll also do is we'll go to additional options. I will ask for estimates of effect size. The default is eta squared. Um, so SPSS produces your partial eta squared. But for this design, it's going to give you exactly the same results anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So so we'll just stick with eta squared for now. So here's our ANOVA, and what can we say about our data here? Well, as you can see, we've got statistically significant effect of condition on our dependent variable, and we have an effect size of an eta squared of 0 0.03. And we can just write this up accordingly. There's a significant main effect of condition on contentment. And then we report our degrees of freedom, our F statistic, our P value, and our eta squared. Of course, that doesn't tell us the full story. What else are we interested in? Well, this just simply tells us that there's an effective condition in some way. We don't know if people who don't adopt an animal at all are more content than those who adopt a dog or anything like that. So what we need to do is to look at things in a little bit more detail. Firstly, we can click this down here and we can get our descriptive statistics. We can see our means and SDs for our three conditions. So that's not interference on your video behind me. It's just absolutely started battering down outside my office window. But I'll continue anyway. So our descriptive statistics, you can see we've got a mean and SD for dog, cat, and none there. As you can see, scores for content are highest for dog, then cat, and then none. We don't know the extent to which these conditions differ from each other. So what you can do, you could ask for our post hoc tests. Now we can leave it as a standard post hoc test because we've got homogeneity variances and we'll just report the two key tests in this case. So to, in order to get it to produce your post hoc test, you need to just click across condition here. As you can see, we now get our post hoc tests in which it gives us a mean difference, a standard error of the mean difference, t statistic and our two key p-value and so we've got a p-value here for comparison between the dog and cat condition and as you can see there's no statistically significant difference between 
people who adopted a dog and people who adopted a cat in the levels of contentedness. Dog versus non, however, you can see we've got a statistically significant difference. And this is caused by, as you can tell from our descriptive statistics, and indeed the mean direction of our mean difference. You can tell this is because people with a dog are more content than people who didn't adopt a pet at all. Cat versus non, no statistically significant difference between the two either. So this has explained why the ANOVA up here gave us a statistically significant effect. It's driven by the dog versus non condition. But another really nice feature that we can get from JASP is we can get it to give us a Cohen's day effect size for our difference as well. So it'd be useful for us to report this as well, if we want it as well. We could also get confidence intervals for our mean difference as well. So it gives us a good range of statistics when we are following up our ANOVA. Let's get rid of those for now. So we could write this up accordingly. So Participants who adopted the dog were more content, we could give our mean standard deviation here, than the participants in the control condition. We can report our p-value as p equals 0 0.035, and we can give our Cohen's d of 0.41 as well. And then we can say, but they are not different from those who adopted a cat, and again we can give our p-value and our Cohen's d, and so also state that the cat and control condition did not differ from each other, and give the p-value and the Cohen's D for that as well. So we've described our data in a considerable amount of detail here, so our reader knows that we've got our overall main effect from our ANOVA, and we've got a clear description of which conditions differ, whether the extent to which they're statistically significant, and the effect size for that difference as well. The other thing you could also ask for, we could ask for a descriptive plot, in which we can just have condition on the horizontal axis. This gives us our little plot here and if we display our error bars there you go we can see the pattern in our data there. Highest consensus scores in the dog owners, the cat owners and then none. So the confidence intervals we could also give a standard error instead. All in all this interface allows us to produce a clear and comprehensive universe ANOVA in which we can get some useful statistics for example the Kevin's day effect size that we just wouldn't be able to simply produce in SPSS. So what do we do when we violate assumptions? Let's start with a new data set. So here we go this is exactly the, the same design of the experiments but as you can see, I've made the data, so it doesn't have homogeneity variance. So we can set this up, just like we did last time. So we put in condition, it's our fixed factor, contented as our dependent variable. And we go to our assumption checks. We take homogeneity tests. And now you can see in this example, we do not meet the assumption of homogeneity variance. We've got a statistically significant Levine's test. And you'd probably want to tell the reader that at some point, um, due to the data violating the assumption of homogeneity variances, Levine's test P equals 0 0.045, a well test was conducted. Um, however, there's very convincing arguments that you should actually just always do a well test instead. And um, there's a link to a blog on the subject and um, the um, description of this video guide is well worth a read. So, so we've got a little issue here. So. We can't actually technically trust this number if you want because this is based on the assumption of homogeneity variances. So we can ask for our homogeneity corrections and we'll just simplify things a little a little bit and we'll just ask for our Welch statistic instead. And then as you'll see this makes absolutely no difference to our conclusions whatsoever. However we should be reporting the correct statistical tests according to our data so we've got a Welch homogeneity correction on it and then we report this data accordingly. There was a significant main effect of condition on contentment, and now we report our degrees of freedom, our F statistic, and our p value. Now, of course, we'd also want to give an effect size as well. It's very important to always report effect sizes with everything that you do. So we go to our additional options, 
and we click estimates of effect size and then we've got our ETA squared statistic to report alongside our p-value when we write all our an ANOVA. So now we also have to do some postdoc tests on it. So we select postdoc tests, click across condition. We don't want to use a standard postdoc test because we don't have homogeneity variance we can ask for our games how post hoc test instead so we can click standard as well so this is a slightly different calculation than our standard one as you can see if we can just quickly compare the two you can see the statistics that are produced by them are very slightly different from each other they won't make any difference in our conclusions so we'll just leave it just with the two key correction on it and we can see that in this example there is a statistically significant difference between dog and cat owners this time and if we get our descriptive statistics make this very clear you can see content contentment is higher in dog owners than cat owners and the main difference shows this simply the difference between them and the statistically significant difference between dog and the control no pet condition statistically significant difference and cat and non do not significantly differ from each other so just as before we could also try and ask for effect sizes but problematically we can't get an effect size when we have the gamers how post hoc test type if you do it as a standard you can see that we do that's what our effect sizes would be if we had it using the standard method but we can't produce an effect size when we're doing the game's how method this is also the case if we just unclick them if we use the dunnets test as well it won't give us our effect size unfortunately in that case you can still ask for our descriptive plots if you want so you can put that on our horizontal axis get to display our error bars so if it's confidence intervals you can see our pattern results there and this time it's a little bit different the last example dogger much more contented than the other two and we could have it as a standard error as well so we've got some slightly smaller bars and again we can see our pattern of results quite clearly here so hopefully this is showing you the real basics of how to use JASP to do a univariate ANOVA and also how to deal with the violation of homogeneity of variances in a subsequent video a short video I'll also show you how to use this menu to produce a non-parametric equivalent across Skull Wallace test.